my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is our live art show. Normally, I do an art journal, but I have had so many requests on how did I paint my suitcase that I decided that's what I was going to do tonight. Obviously, I don't have a huge suitcase up here on my desk, but you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm using the same, uh, basically the same thing. So, Anyways, I do have Joe here to help out on any questions, so if you do have a question, just go ahead and do your best to put it in bold so we do, or caps, excuse me, so that we see it. I am going to switch cameras, and we're going to get going. Okay, we're down here on my desk, and like I said, I couldn't bring a full um, suitcase up here, so this actually is part of my suitcase um, uh, collection, I guess. Um, it's the exact same material as the suitcase that I have been showing on Facebook. So, um, but I actually use it for my computer because it's the perfect size for my um, computer. So I want to show you um, ideas of how you can decorate your suitcase and you'll be able to spot it really easily if, when you're traveling. I'm using, I actually use the stencil and I did some freehand stuff, but I want to show you other ways that you could also do it. Um, the stencil that I actually am using is from a company called um, Stencibit, and they have self-adhesive um, stencils that really you wouldn't have to use a self-adhesive. This just makes it easy. The other option is you could use coloring book images like this really cool owl, and I've showed you guys this before, the um, Serral's Wax-Free Trans, um, transfer paper. You want to get it if you have a dark suitcase like mine in the white. And when you come over to here to the side, it says it right there. It says white. See that? So this is the one you want if you have a dark thing. So then you would lay down the transfer paper down on your suitcase. You put your image over top and then you trace around your image and it'll show. And I tested that and it does work. So that's your other option. Um, but the option I'm going to show you is the easiest option, and that is basically doing self-painting and using stencils. So for my other suitcase, um, I'm going to kind of keep that theme, I found this really cool vine stencil. And as you see, it's a really long stencil, but I don't have to use the whole thing. I can use sections of it and it'll be just fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. And the first thing I do on every time I do this is I start with gesso. So I'm gonna lay some gesso down here on my table. I have it off camera a little bit. And I'm using a makeup sponge. When I taught you guys to use a makeup sponge and a um, stencil, you always wanna get a little bit of paint on here. So you're gonna dab on paint and you're gonna dab off paint before you go onto the stencil. So I'm going to dab on some paint, dab off some paint, and then I'm going to come over to my stencil here and I'm just going to start going right through using that tapping motion. If you look at what I'm doing, I'm tapping up and down, up and down. If you try to do this motion, you're going to end up going underneath that stencil, I guarantee it. So just do the tapping motion and that way you kind of push the stencil also down and it just protects your work and you'll get a better a better uh, look in the long run. And so decide on your stencil how much you want to use. I might not grab this whole stencil section. I might just do part of it. And this first layer I am doing in gesso, just plain old gesso. Okay, and then I'm going to lift that up and there's how I got that down already. Now this isn't a huge section, so I'm probably not going to do a whole lot more of this um, of the vine here because there's not a lot of room but I am going to do one more here and I did this one over here right before we came on so that it would be good and dry so that when we um, go to paint over it you'll see what to do so I'm going to do one more stencil right here in the white There we go. <clears throat> so I like that. Now, 
at this point you can decide to either color come in and color this freehand or you could put the stencil back on and go through it again when I did it before I actually did freehand and what I also wanted to do is I wanted to use a matte color first so I do I do a lot of layering so the first layer I'm going to do is a you know like a matte dark green here and I just have it sitting there. I have a round brush and I'm just going to come in and start painting right over top of that gesso. And the reason you want to do the gesso first is if I tried to put this dark green on, you wouldn't be able to see it because the um, the fabric in the back is so dark that you just would not see the um, green that I'd be painting. So make sure you do not skip that simple step of using the gesso it really does make a huge difference and it's pretty warm here today so things are going to dry real quick i sure got a lot of paint on my hands oh well happy hands right so so you see it's nothing that fancy that i'm doing here i'm just painting in right over what is already there and I'm just putting on a nice dark color right now so that when I go back over it later with other colors it'll be more of a highlight and I am using just plain old acrylic paint and I've had people ask, aren't you afraid it's going to flake off? All that stuff. Really, it's not. It's absorbing into this material because this material has a little bit of a, I want to say texture for lack of a better word. So you're really not going to have that problem of it doing that. Now this should be dry enough. I'm hoping over here to paint. If not, we're just going to get a little lighter green because <laughs> it's going to miss, mix in with that gesso just a little bit. But I do like to keep, make sure it's dry in between each layer before I add this next layer on. So as I always say, do as I say, not as I do. I did this over my other, my big suitcase over like three or four days before I finished it. But also I was doing it all the way around so that every um, side has, um, you know, painting on it. So you couldn't really do one side when the other side was still wet because you had to let it dry. Couldn't really lay it down. So okay. Now I also at this point want to come in and use the gesso to also paint my flowers out. So I'm cleaning out my paintbrush here. Now I am going to come somewhat towards me and, uh, and it's kind of a, when you do flowers, they're just basically petals. I do a five petal flower. You know, nothing too fancy. Kind of just a flower with a point or a petal with a point on each end. And then I just kept coming around and getting it painted in. And I didn't worry about it being painted in perfectly because I can't, you know, this is just the bottom layer of my flower. Like I said, there'll be lots more paint color on top of this. Yep, Joe, it's six weeks before I come in. Six weeks from tomorrow, I fly out. Going out to see Joe. I'm so excited. So, you see that? So, I got a flower done. And I usually like to have. Go ahead. I think honey. 62 days away from Gen Con. 62 days from Gen Con. I'm so excited. God help us. We're going to rock it. 
Gen Con, we're all going to Gen Con. That's in, um, was that Michigan? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. I knew it was one of those states. Um, and first weekend in August. I don't know if you any of you guys are gamers. Did you see how that flower is turning out? I'm actually probably not going to put another uh, another flower. Eh. I'm going to leave it like that. I like that. Now, I've already got this layer pretty much dry. So at this point, I usually like to come in with a lighter color. So I'm going to use Golden's um, Green Gold, which is absolutely one of my favorite colors. I love this color. It's kind of a, it's a green gold. <laughs> and I'm not going to worry about the gesso on my brush. And then here you can just start doing like shadows and um, highlights. So you don't need to paint the whole leaf at this point. You're just kind of putting highlights on the leaf at this point. So I'm only doing just a little touch of it. See that? See how I'm not getting the whole leaf? I'm still allowing that dark green that I put on originally to show through and be important. And I am getting this like highlights going. Because this is going to give the flowers more or the leaves more depth by having this. See that already? I mean, what a difference. See that? Amazing difference just putting that second color in there. So again, I'm doing that same thing over here. Bring it in that second color and then I usually will even go in with the third color and at that point I do like to bring in um, color arts uh, silk acrylics because they have that natural um, mica to them so they have that shimmer so I have instantly I have that third layer that's on there is got the shimmer to it so it's even happier where Golden's paints as much as I love them and you guys all know I do don't really have that sparkle that the um, mica gives to the paint that the silks give. So that will be my next layer. Especially on the flowers. I definitely want to have that layer effect on the flowers. So again, there's... And see how quickly I'm doing this? I mean, really. I've already got the leaves like 90% done and I have just started. We've only been working, what, 12 minutes. <laughs> Not even that because I talk in the beginning. So I'm just kind of, and the drier your brush is, the more accents you can get. So even though I haven't loaded my brush in a while, I'm kind of still going over sections and it's kind of giving me like a dry brush technique for the back, lack of a better word, where I'm just getting almost like a highlight where it's almost touching the top of the fabric and not really sinking in. And it's even giving you more of depth than the whole paint over. If you had a lot of paint on your brush, you're going to get less of that look than if you're just letting your tips of your brush work for itself. Okay, and I'm going to come in with the third color, and I'm going to use Kiwi, which again is from Silks Acrylic, which is a Golden Arts product. And this is where I'm going to get that shimmer, and I'm even going to get more of a highlight. It's even more, um, has more light in it than the Golden paint does, even though that green gold is pretty... Um, is a lot lighter than the original color I used, which was pretty dark. This is even lighter, so it's even going to give me more highlight than what I had already achieved. And I'm sure you can already see that in the painting. See that? <clears throat> Where it's already given us more of a highlight. So it's almost like the sun is kissing this one little section. And again, I have very little paint on my brush, and I'm almost tapping it on instead of 
brushing it on per se. I'm kind of tapping it and just giving it, letting it fall where, where it may. Maybe that's a good way of saying it. I'm going to go in and grab just a tiny bit more paint. And when I'm putting paint on my brush, I'm putting barely on any on in the first place. So I'm just kind of tapping it in the, in the paint container as much as I'm tapping it on to my painting. See that? I want you to really see that. See the highlights I'm getting in that? Now, in this exact same technique that we're doing can be done to paint anything, a canvas. I just happen to be showing you on a suitcase. See how I'm tapping? And look at that already. See the highlights? Amazing. Amazing, I love this. So simple, but yet so elegant. And you definitely will, somebody will, you will see your suitcase, no problem. Okay, I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna work on this flower, so I'm gonna clean my brush off. And I'm going to make it a yellow flower because I happen to have yellow here. And again, I'm going to use a heavy body acrylic. doesn't necessarily have to be a heavy body, but the yellow I have is a heavy body. Um, just plain yellow. It doesn't have any um, transparentness to it. it. Is It is a completely opaque color. And um, my first color, I almost always wanted to be completely opaque. After that, I might go in and put... Um, you know, transparent colors over that, but in the beginning, I want this really opaque color, solid color, I guess is what I'm, you know, getting at. I want it to be very solid. I'm kind of just doing that same thing, you know, same motion. And when I paint, I kind of paint with the stroke of the flower. So if you think about it, my flower petal, if you watch my hand, I'm using the flower petal as my stroke. Because if you do that, it kind of, it just flows nicer. I, I don't know how to explain that, but it does. It becomes a prettier, there's the words for it. You're not forcing what you're doing. It's becoming, it becomes natural. That's how the petal would go. That's how your brush should go. Terry, I'm getting a lot of choppy sound on my end, but no one's posted any comments or anything about it. So I don't know if anybody else is having the same problem. Oh yeah, we just love this. Keep hoping I can get Google, um, Facebook to work for me soon. Um, let us know if you're having any problems. We can always end this pretty quickly here. You guys are getting the idea. If it continues being really bad, then I can um, end it. There's my a lot of, a lot of highlights on that. A little too too bright. Again, then I would go over it with. I'm going to use silks. Um, this one's called orange peel. And yes, I'm going to go from yellow to orange. And I'm not going to use the orange everywhere. I'm going to kind of use it kind of like the way I used the yellow. Probably should let it dry just a little more, but see that? Again, not using a lot of paint. Letting it soak into that um, fabric. Well, I need to get my uh, fans going in this room. I am sweating my little butt off. 
So again, is anybody having any um, problems? We've got a few viewers in the room. Probably don't care that they can't hear me. They just want to watch me paint. So see that? Highlights going. And then I would just keep going with that layering over and over until I was happy with it. And I might even go with, um, this is Love Struck, which is red. <laughs> and I'd be really, really careful with how I use this. I would use this very sparingly. Like I would just mainly maybe just touch the edges here. And maybe even use my finger and bring it in. Because it's really, really intense. So, even finger paint. Here, I'm just touching the edge with this really, really intense red. And then I'm using my finger to blend it into the petal. So it's almost given it like a shadow because it's so dark. It's becoming a shadow. And if you think it got too dark, if you're not happy with something, the best part about all this is you can go right back over it, even though I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. I could go right back over it with, say, <clears throat> the orange again and tone it down a little. And the more you let it dry in between, the better um, chance you're going to have of it not muddying up. So don't layer as much as I am. Let it dry just a little bit more than I am letting it dry so that you don't muddy your colors because that's bad. But, and again, if you think it's too much, you can always come back in with that yellow and kind of blend it out a little bit. So this is basically all I did with my suitcases. I just kept doing this layering and layering until I was happy or until I decided I should just stop because I like to layer. It's fun. I could keep going doing this forever. Keep layering it. And I'm just, I'm picking up the yellow again is what I'm picking up to, um, I'm adding on top of here. So I'm going right back into that yellow. And I still have some beautiful layering in there. See that? And you can really see the texture. This is why the, the paint's going to stick. I'm not worried about it not sticking because it's... And basically, that's all I did, guys. I'm going to actually end it here for a number of reasons. One, the audio. And two, I am sweating more than I can tell you. <laughs> I need to get some fans in this room. <laughs> but that's basically all I do is just keep layering like this. Let it dry a little more than I've been doing so that you don't get your muddies going and you really get the transparent uh, the layers going better than I did. But look how pretty that is. And we did it in half hour. In a half hour, I made my suitcase beautiful. So, okay, I'm going to switch cameras even though I'm sweating more than I probably want you to see, but that's okay. You guys all love me, so you don't care. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, so, again, hot in here. Um, thank you very much. I will see you next Tuesday and hopefully between now and Tuesday. Maybe I'll figure out how to use Facebook Live. I just got to figure out how to put my camera up here somehow. So thank you very much, everybody, and I appreciate you showing up. If you had a question and you didn't get a chance to ask me, you can ask me over on Facebook um, in my group called All Things Terry Sprout, or you can just PM me personally on Facebook. And again, there's my pretty suitcase. Real quickly done. Half hour, we do a pretty suitcase. Bye. <laughs>